Radiation biologist Dr. Eleanor Blakely states that aluminium shielding, like what was used on Apollo, would worsen the radiation problem because it increases the risk of particle fragmentation. Is she right? I have seen that video. Since she's one of the people your hero Ralph Rene would call a heavily credentialed gas bag. Correction. The only people Rene called gas bags were scientists, or in some cases, self-proclaimed scientists, who opposed his theories but offered no valid reason for their objections. Much the same way, my opponents have earned themselves the title propagandists for the high levels of propaganda that they spread all over the internet. Then, I would tend to believe what she says. Was there some point in your including this? Oh, and by the way, you didn't mention that she was making these comments with respect to a mission to Mars. Oh, and don't worry. Unlike you, I have no need to quote mine. I have no need to quote mine. Quote mine. Quote mine. Didn't I? I showed her statement in full in my video on this subject. Eleanor Blakely, a radiation biologist for the Life Sciences Division at Lawrence National Laboratory, also spoke of ethylene shielding as well as the possibility of shielding spacecrafts with its actual fuel tanks. Uh, yes, I was just wondering if you could speak to um, how difficult it would be to shield a spacecraft or even a spacesuit against uh, different types of radiation. Yes, you ask another good question. The only problem is particles undergo a process called fragmentation. So if a particle comes in and hits like an aluminum shielding, you, it actually fragments into an array of particles of lower atomic number. So you actually have a higher fluence on the inside than you would have on the outside. So there's been recent study by NASA of the materials of the spacecraft, because hydrogenous materials uh, like um, shielding, polyethylene shielding can reduce just by the different Z of the impact of the uh, ions coming in from space. So shielding has limitations from that point of view. However, I talked to an astronaut that he, his light vision is that, um, of course, what you want to do is minimize the exposure to Mars. So he, he's a big proponent of other kind, alternative propulsion. And he would like to put the propulsion material, which is hydrogenous, in big tanks around the spacecraft. Now that would really ruin your view, but it certainly would shield you. And so they have lots of things under study just to examine different alternative shielding. Obviously, Apollo could never have been shielded with its own propellants, as the majority of which was spent right at the beginning of the trip. It should also be noted that Apollo used aluminium shielding, which, by Dr. Blakely's admission, would increase the risk of particle fragmentation and thus worsen the radiation problem. So if a particle comes in and hits like an aluminum shielding, you, it actually fragments into an array of particles of lower atomic number. So you actually have a higher fluence on the inside than you would have on the outside. And before you try anything funny, I asked her how these statements apply in regard to an Apollo mission. And she confirmed that the particle fragmentation problem also stands. I asked her, would this be the case on an Apollo spacecraft? After all, Apollo used aluminium shielding. And she said, Indeed, aluminium shielding is what most spacecrafts are made of. And the issue of charged particles fragmenting upon impact with aluminium to charged particles of lower atomic number can create a complex radiation field within the spacecraft. I would tend to believe what she says. I would tend to believe what she says. I would tend to believe what she says. So, you agree with her that aluminium worsens the radiation problem? Or do you change your stance now that you know it applies to Apollo Craft 2? Isn't it true that aluminium shielding on the International Space Station, due to the fragmentation of cosmic rays, increased the daily radiation doses from 0 0.027 rem per day to 0.1 rem per day? Very interesting. And since astronauts on the space station are generally there for much longer than any of the Apollo missions lasted, 
this might be something of significance. By the way, did any of them die or get serious radiation sickness from this? Unlike you, I have no need to quote, I have mine. No need to quote, mine. quote mine. Straw man, I never claimed the ISS crews died from this increased particle fragmentation. I simply showed this article because it agrees with what Dr. Blakely stated, that aluminium worsens the radiation problem. John Malden and Gene Parker state that the typical radiation doses in low orbit are 10 rem per year, which is 0.027 rem per day. The aluminium walls of the space station elevated that dose to 0.1 rem per day. This is approximately 3.7 times the doses that are normally received in low orbit. And that's just on the ISS travelling in low orbit. Now suppose it was travelling through regions or during events where the doses range from tens to hundreds to even thousands of rem per hour. <laughs>